Hello everyone, my name is Dan Farkas. I am a real estate broker in West Michigan. Um, I want to make a quick video to uh, answer the biggest question I get when working with first time home buyers, and that is how much money do I need to buy a home? Um, first of all, I just wanna say that um, that is extremely variable based on what type of loan you have. And also the purchase price of what um, home you're buying. Um, different loan programs require different down payments. So in an effort to kind of help you guys out with that, I prepared a couple documents and I am going to show those to you right here. This paper right here uh, that I'm bringing is, is called a settlement statement. It was made up from a recent closing about uh, in January, just a couple weeks ago, um, basically uh, about Chicago Title. I uh, wrote this up because we were closing there on a purchase of right here, it says $165,000. So on the left side, you have the description of charges on the settlement statement, and this reflects all the costs most of the costs associated with purchasing property, okay? So over here on the left side, you have uh, the sale price of a property. It was uh, $165,000. Their deposit, also known as an earnest money deposit, was $1,000 here. See how that gets credited to you? That is comes off the purchase price and or the amount of money that you bring to close, if that makes sense to you. Um, we can talk a little bit about earnest money deposit in another video, how uh, I go through the purchase agreement and we go through every paragraph on what is in a purchase agreement. So a lot of my buyer clients just think that's just really nice to go through. So anyways, uh, check that out on a different video. But this one right here about closing costs uh, comes down to back over on this financial part. Their loan amount, they were getting a 3% uh, down uh, loan, which means that it is from the actual purchase price. So in this purchase price, it was $165,000, and then 3% down would be $4,950. So how they reflect that is if you were to uh, subtract $4,950, from this $165,000, you would get that number of $160,000. So that's what that down payment is. And that's why they expressed it on this paperwork like this. Um, part of our negotiation on this purchase agreement is when we went to uh, our inspections, we found out that the roof was really probably going to need some work in the next couple of years. So we asked the seller to pay for uh, part of that. However, the way we expressed it was in an effort for my clients to hang on to a little bit more money and use um, their uh, money that was once uh, going to go towards their closing costs, we had the seller use give us a credit so that they can hang on to that so later down the road, they can apply what they didn't spend in closing costs on their roof. I hope that makes sense. So instead of just saying we want $3,500 for a roof, we, we ask them to give us $3,500 in closing costs. And I hope this makes sense because this is a credit to them, which means that they now have to pay $3,500 less in closing costs. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions on that uh, or any of this, please get a hold of me. Um, when you buy a piece of property, there is uh, taxes um, that need to be prorated for in that calendar year. For instance, um, here it has the uh, first day of the year of 2020 until the day of close. And they are getting credited for those taxes because the seller has lived there. Now, we closed on the 1st of January, and that's why those dates are there. And when it goes uh, to taxes, my buyers got stuck, if you will, with the 2020 taxes, the whole year of taxes, but they got credited for the time that the seller was at the house. I hope that makes sense. Uh, down here, loan charges to Lake Michigan Credit Union. Um, Any time that you ask for money from a bank, they're going to have fees associated with that. 
and they uh, charge, uh, Lake Michigan Credit Union right now charges, I guess, $375 for underwriting and $395 for processing. Um, just part of their whole um, deal of borrowing money from them. Down here on page two, um, you have other costs associated with purchasing a home. Anytime that you get a loan, there is most likely going to be an appraisal. And what an appraisal is, is a third party company coming in and verifying that the house that you just purchased for, in this case, $165,000 is reasonable. Um, for instance, they the bank does not want to loan $165,000 on a house that is only valued to the market of $100,000. Um, that's just not a good loan that they would be interested in, in, in doing. So that's why they get an appraisal. Uh, to verify the market value um, is worth what um, you're paying for it. Additionally, different loans, um, if you look back on this page, may require different types of conditions that are associated with the um, property. So like this three and a half percent down is typically a, a FHA loan. They have different guidelines that the home has to meet in order to uh, get a loan on it. For instance, uh, different conditions, no broken glass, handrails. Maybe you've heard of some of those things, but um, Every home has to meet minimum property standards in order to get a loan on it. For the most part, there's ways around some of that too. However, uh, that's an, uh, another appraiser's job is to not only verify the value, but also um, make sure that there isn't uh, major concerns with the property. And please don't ex uh, confuse an appraisal with an inspection. We can do another video on inspections uh, down the road as well, um, or the difference between an appraisal and an inspection. So anyways, this buyer actually paid $400 outside of close. And for whatever reason, maybe the appraiser, uh, there was some accounting or something that went wrong on this or something, but $41 is still debited to it uh, as far as maybe that was left over from the appraisal not getting paid completely. So that shows up on the settlement statement. A credit report fee um, is basically a, um, when you borrow money from a bank, they're going to verify that what you actually claim is on your credit is, is actually there. So a credit report to pull your credit. Um, they want to verify that everything is credit worthy and there is a fee associated with that. So that's a charge of $50 here. A flood certification. Um, here is down here. A flood certification. It's another third party company hired to determine if the property that you are purchasing is in a floodplain. Um, Yes, this can happen, and no, not all sellers actually know if they're in this floodplain, and we can chat about that as well. So if you are in a floodplain, there are certain things that need to happen, and you need to have a uh, flood insurance policy um, above and beyond your homeowner's insurance policy. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen that the house can be in a floodplain. So we can talk about those. And um, but a flood certification is basically on every every uh, lend loaned home, if you will. So I guess uh, if you're getting a loan for a home, uh, they're going to do a flood certification. A property tax uh, re research fee. Um, this is a um, right here. Basically, when you go and borrow money from a bank um, and get a loan for a house, there is a, there's property taxes attached to every home. Now, those property taxes can go up and sometimes even down based on the economy. And those taxes uh, will be going up based on each year. And instead of the bank being short on an escrow account, um, 
they basically need to um, employ a company to look into to make sure that you're paying enough taxes. So taxes go up and your taxes are set in your escrow account. Um, there may be a shortfall based on if the taxes go up. So they employ a, a third party company to make sure that um, there's enough taxes and money being collected to pay the taxes and they audit your account. So that's what a property tax research fee is. And there's a charge for that. Prepaid interest is something that um, basically when you go and uh, buy a home, as you can see right here, they charge $18.64 based on the interest rate and principal from the day of close to the next month. So there's $410, if you will, in interest that they tack on for your um, first partial month of owning that home. Now, February 1st, you will live in that home and all the way to March 1st in this in this instance, and then you were, your first payment will be somewhere around March 1st through the, I don't know, maybe there's a grace period of seven days. So somewhere from March 1st to the end of March, or not end of March, but the end of the first week of March, you'll have your first payment. So when you buy a home, you actually live in it, then pay for it. And in this uh, scenario right here, you have the interest for one on uh, the 10th of uh, January to the end of the month. Hope that makes sense. Impounds are sometimes called escrows is an interesting thing here. Um, anytime you uh, borrow money, it is in the bank's best interest to get you signed up with an escrow account. And when you have an, an escrow account, they usually typically give you a little um, some banks give you a discount on the um, um, percentage or the interest that they're charging you. And, and here's why. Um, a tax lien or property taxes become a lien on the property if they're not paid. For instance, you go out and buy a home and with that you get billed from your city or your municipality um, based on the taxes uh, associated with that property each year. And if you never pay those, then you actually go to tax sale and the county can foreclose on that property based on unpaid taxes. In that case, uh, they would sell the house to uh, the, the minimum taxes owed on it and most likely to a cash investor and in, in it's in an auction, so um, the bids can go up as much as, you know, they can go up quite a bit. But basically, that bank, once that happens, has no claim on that property at all. So it is the best interest of the lender to collect taxes ahead of time and during the month of each payment so that they can apply it for the next year. And this is kind of what this is doing is they are actually building up that escrow account to help pay for that to come out next year. So this first paragraph here says homeowners insurance to Lake Michigan Credit Union of $157. So that's two months at about $80 a month. So each payment you make, you're making your principal, your interest, plus your homeowner's insurance, a portion of it, one twelfth of your homeowner's insurance policy, and then ideally one twelfth of your property taxes. These are estimated on your current taxes and your current um, homeowner's insurance policy. Those numbers can go up as well. But that's what escrows are, but those are part of your closing costs. So you can see that this is $1,158 right here that uh, they're collecting ahead of time in order to do that. This uh, next little section here, the aggregate adjustment to Lake Mission Credit Union is kind of an odd duck. This odd duck is that um, the aggregate adjust, uh, adjustment basically says there's a law that says uh, uh, real estate 
in Settlement Procedures Act law that right here, lenders can only keep one sixth of your total yearly property tax and homeowners insurance balance at any one time. So since they've actually collected this much and according to RESPA laws, they did their checks and balances and, and, and found out that this number needed to go back to the buyer because they were not following RESPA laws. And this is a normal process. Don't get too, too uh, scared about it. Uh, title charges and escrow settlement charges. Um, when you sit down and uh, sign your life away on a 30-year note and uh, your favorite realtor, me, uh, sits there and eats snacks and drinks coffee, there is a charge for that. Now, it's not just a buyer charge. Um, it's actually a seller's charge too. The seller pays about the same um, of approximately $300 to do so. So um, that there's a charge for that, for the title insurance to do that. Um, lenders title insurance to um, the title company based on the actual amount that they're loaning on, okay? So notice over here, there is $160,050. That is the same thing of your loan amount right here. And the reason why they do that is because a title insurance company, they're in business to create um, policies in the effort that there is any claim on the ownership of the property. For instance, um, when you buy a home, the seller provides title insurance to the buyer, and this actually protects the future buyer should the title insurance company not actually done their job well and verified that the current people that are selling that property have the legal right to do so. I know it sounds a little scamish and stuff, but this is something that is needed because there is sellers or people that are posing as sellers and trying to sell homes and there is a verification process that you need to verify that you actually own that home. And there's records pertaining to who actually has the right to sign those papers of ownership. So in a process, the seller gives a, uh, in the process of purchasing a home, the seller gives um, title insurance to the buyer, but the, in the title insurance and lender title insurance, um, you are actually, as the buyer, providing a title insurance policy to your lender should there be any claim on ownership as well. Um, so there's seller going to buyer and then buyer needs to pay for an insurance policy to your lender. Because if they have any claim, if there is any claim on there, they want to make sure that they get their money back. Um, let's see here. Uh, down here, uh, record processing fee. Um, I think this is going to be a recording of some documents of to the county. I honestly don't know exactly what that is. So <laughs> it's $10 all. Um, commissions. Uh, broker administration fee to First Advantage Realty. Now, I am revealing here that our broker... First Advantage Realty charges a $199 administration fee towards every um, purchase and sale that we encounter. So that is a charge to the buyer uh, in this case, and that's reflected on the purchase, or not the purchase agreement, but the settlement statement. Uh, next thing is recording fees. Oh, by the way, broker administration fee. I have actually seen this number way high. I've seen this uh, seven to eight hundred dollars. So um, that might be a good question to ask uh, your your uh, buyer's agent. Uh, what is if there's an admin fee? Just know that number if you're going forward. If, if you find it to be worth it, then great. Um, uh, if there's a higher charge on there, but most brokers actually have that nowadays. So down to the next one, government recordings and transfer charges. So to register a deed and also to, um, oh, I'm sorry, to record a deed and to record a mortgage associated with that, the county, Kent County in this case, 
makes a charge to do that. Um, and in this case, this is $65. This becomes part of public records so that when you go and sell it, the title insurance company can look up and see who is the ownership. And they can, re, re, they can request those documents and verify that they are actually uh, verifying the current owner of the property. Um, right here, a lender will not loan money on a home that is uninsured. For instance, um, this, just for, uh, just think about loaning out money on a piece of property and then it burns to the ground and there's no insurance. In this case, there would be $165 or $165,000 just lost, just disappeared in, in, in that fire. So a homeowner's insurance policy, in theory, should rebuild that property to certain standards um, based on their insurance uh, policy. And um, therefore, the lender has something that they still hold the deal, the deed to. So... In order for a homeowner's insurance policy um, to be good for a year, they, they, they pay for it uh, up front for a year. And that charge right there was uh, $947, which is pretty typical for this uh, purchase price of a home. I've seen it a little bit lower. I've seen it a little bit higher. You're going to want to make sure that you investigate homeowner's insurance policies and make sure that you are looking into the, to what it covers. So you can get cheaper insurance. And um, if you wanted lower coverages, um, maybe these people had um, a little bit less uh, coverage or more coverage. I don't know, but they made the choice that this is, and this is the fee that's associated with it. So anyways, at the end here, we have the uh, subtotals of they take all these costs in this column of debits, which are your closing costs, and then they actually add in the down payment of that amount, and they come up with this is how much the, the debit is, and then the loan policy plus the additional funds equals how much they need to bring to close. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and there you go. Um, if I missed anything, please um, get a hold of me. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time. And I think most people can find it pretty valuable. But that's the closing cost and uh, down payment uh, video.